All right, welcome to the Mac Group meeting, and we're going to start our main presentation, which is on iOS 7. So, um, how many of you have already upgraded something to iOS 7? The vast majority of you. Now, Apple's upgrades seem <coughs> to get adopted very quickly, whether it's Mac OS or iOS, um, across the board. I guess because they make it easy and people trust them. Um, I have been an iOS user since day one, iPhone 1 back in 2007, and I have had each one, I've had each iOS upgrade and each update. And definitely, I mean, you'll see me, uh, you'll see a blog post tomorrow on, on the Mac News site of what my top seven features are. But this is, of all those updates since 2007, this is definitely the one that's the most radical. It's the most changed update of all the ones that they've ever had. Uh, I'll, I'll, and I'll give you my initial impression. Tw I had two initial impressions because <laughs> I did it on two devices. On my iPhone, it was like, oh my God, yuck. <laughs> but on my iPad, for some reason, it was like, oh, this is great. And it was, I think the difference was because the iPhone's smaller, icons are tighter together, it just, at first glance, seemed way more cluttered. Now that was on, that was actually before day one. It came out when this past Wednesday or Thursday? Wednesday. Wednesday, and I had it when it went, because I'm a developer, so I had it um, a week before that. I hadn't installed any of the betas, but I waited for it to go Golden Master, and I, and I installed that version. So I hadn't, hadn't really looked at it, hadn't followed it much, knew it was coming, knew, you know, read bits and pieces, but really hadn't taken the time to look at it until I actually installed it. Um, as with anything, there will be things you'll love, and there'll be things that are just okay, and there may be a few things you don't like. And that's just the nature of any software update. It's like, uh, uh, the way I described it to a friend, it would be like if I came to your house and I told you to go away for two days, and I went in your house and I moved everything around slightly. Turn things, twisted things, move something from one drawer to the next, and then told you to come home and find everything. So a lot of it's just going through what you used to do and how you used to do it and doing it the new way. Um, so I made a list of a lot of things I hope to cover today. If I don't cover it all, it's okay. We'll cover it in future meetings. But I'm going to go ahead and jump right in with... Um, some of my favorite features. Um, so let's do this. Let's hide the browser for a moment. And let's hide iTunes. And let's do this. Okay, so here's um, iOS 7 running on my uh, iPhone 5S. And the first thing, probably my favorite new feature, and it's so simple, but it's the thing I absolutely love because I look at favorite features as there are favorite features that or there are features that catch your attention because they're they're cool, but then there are features that are probably gonna do you better because you're gonna use them more often. And so this falls into the latter category. It's something I'm gonna use every single day. And that's the new control center. So control center is accessed by simply swiping up from the bottom of the screen. So if I swipe up, there's Control Center. And what I like about it is some of these things you could have gotten to by double tapping the home key and, and swiping to the right to bring up the control panel or the um, taskbar or whatever, or the dock, whatever it was called. Um, however, most of these things were buried in a menu. Like you had to go to settings to get to them. So for example, I was on a flight coming home from New York yesterday. Obviously, I have to put my, my um, devices in airplane mode. That used to be a trip to the settings app. Scroll over, find it, tap airplane mode, and close the settings. Now it's the icon, and it's the first icon in the upper left hand corner. I'm not going to turn it on now because I don't want to disconnect. But <laughs> it's the first icon in the upper left corner. Um, you can see the Wi Fi icon. So if it's white, that means it's activated. Uh, Bluetooth is on. And the third one is another one that I used to have to go into settings for, and that's Do Not Disturb. I'm going to talk a little bit more about Do Not Disturb in a moment, but I have Do Not Disturb turned on for a reason. And the last icon is the lock rotation. 
very useful, especially on an iPad, because you know if you're kind of leaning back or laying down with an iPad and you slightly turn it, it's going to rotate the iPad. So you can turn off that rotation. Um, then there's the brightness slider, the control over the music app. So it's showing me what song was currently playing. Um, and I'm using iTunes uh, radio, which we'll get into in a moment. Play, fast forward, sound volume. And then the uh, next row where it says airdrop, airdrop is a new feature for file sharing. Now that falls into the first category. Cool technology, going to be great, but won't use it every day. At least not yet. My biggest disappointment for AirDrop, and by the way, what AirDrop is, is you have AirDrop on your Mac that allows two or more Macs just by bringing up AirDrop to be able to send files back and forth. Sorry about that. Um, with AirDrop on iOS, same thing. I can send pictures, contacts, things from other apps back and forth between devices wirelessly. The problem with AirDrop, and this is why I won't be using it every single day, is AirDrop is one of those features in iOS 7 that only works on the latest and greatest devices. So for example, it works on the iPhone 5 on up. I was shocked that it didn't work on the 4S, because 4S is still being sold. Um, but anyway, won't work on the 4S. And I have an iPad, I guess it would be technically the iPad 3, won't work on an iPad 3, has to be a 4 or a mini. And I have a mini, but again, I can't use it on everything I have and I can't use it with everyone I know because not everyone has the latest and greatest devices. Over time, that will of course change. People will upgrade, they'll get newer devices and AirDrop will be more useful. So that's in my wait and see category. Um, the other one down in the lower left hand corner is the flashlight. So now instead of having to download a separate flashlight application, it's a click away. Turns on the strobe on your device, need a flashlight, swipe up, tap the button, you got the flashlight. And I, uh, when I saw that, I, I made the joke that dozens and dozens of flashlight apps on the App Store cried out and then they were suddenly silenced by iOS 7. Because <laughs> why would you have a separate app anymore? And I know the apps can do more, they can flash Morse code, and they can do strobes and all kinds of other things, but at the end of the day, I was only using my flashlight app as a flashlight. Now, there's some other ones down here. There's a uh, tap to get to the, quickly get to the timer. So if you want to time something without having to go in the clocks app and find the timer and so forth and so on, you get to it quickly that way. And um, calculator brings up the calculator right away, no matter where you've buried it in a folder. So, love the calculator. And last but not least, that last icon, the camera. So, um, when you're on the lock screen, your camera can be brought up by swiping up on the lock screen. However, what if you're not on the lock screen? Let me go back. If you're not on the lock screen, then, and you're five pages over, you'd have to find your way back to wherever you've got the camera and get to it that way, or swipe up, tap the camera, and you're in. So, again, just quickly having access to things is what the control panel is all about. Does that replace the icon? No, the icon's still there. It's just a quicker way to get to it. So it's still there in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, so you still have access to the app the old-fashioned way. So Yes, if you have that turned on, you can turn off that feature. Excuse me, Jerry, I don't see that control panel on mine, and I have it on both these devices. Did you swipe up from the bottom? You have iOS 7 on both devices? Okay, you got it. So it is there. All right, so Control Center, actually, is what it's officially called. I'm sorry, how do you make it so that you don't have to um, uh, swipe anything to enable the camera? It's not that you don't have to swipe anything. She was saying can't, to disable it so you can't, so you, no one can do it while the phone is locked. Oh, That's different. Right now, there's a setting for Control Center to enable it if the phone is locked. You can turn that off in your security settings. 
Um, okay, so second one, Notification Center. Notification Center is not new, but it's been enhanced. So Notification Center was the thing you always grab from the top of the screen and swipe down. So when I swipe down, this is one of those where I'm still not sure if I like the new format and what control or I'm sorry what notification center does is it it's really just your notification center so it's showing me today uh, my friend Marta's birthday is today it's showing me the which is nice it's showing me the current temperature the high will be 68 uh, clear tonight with a low of 45 of course showing me the date showing me that I have a meeting today at three o'clock which I luckily made and then it's showing me the stocks that I follow yay go Adobe and it's uh, showing me what I have tomorrow. It says I have an all-day event scheduled for tomorrow. Now, in the other two categories, you have all, which is just showing me notifications from various apps and any that I missed. So that's what Notification Center has been reorganized to do. It used to just be pretty much one screen that showed everything. But now they've broken it up into the different tabs. So today is just showing, I look at it as today, shows me about me. All and missed, show me about everything else, all the other apps and notifications and things that pop up on your screen. But So I do like the fact that they kind of separated that out so I don't have to look at a whole bunch of notifications that I don't want to look at right now. And I can focus on what's about me, which is my calendar, my stocks, my what's tomorrow, what's the weather, so forth and so on. What I'm not crazy about is... I don't know, it just seems like this screen's longer than it needs to be. I don't know why. It just seems like it's taking up an extra a lot of space to show me blank spots on my calendar. Like, I don't have anything scheduled from 5 to, six, five to 8, and I guess that's kind of the point, saying, oh, you've got an open slot between 5 and 8, but I wish it was just condensed to just show me what I have so it wouldn't have to scroll as much. Again, that's nitpicking, but it's you know, we are talking about the new features. So that is the uh, new notification center. Can you remove something from the notification center? Um, tap the little X in the upper right hand corner, and that's been my complaint since day one, is that while you can remove individual notifications or groups of notifications per app, you can't say clear all. Hmm. I want to just, okay, I've looked at all of them, clear all. If I have notifications from Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever, I have to go through each group and clear each group. And just, I would love a clear all button. I've got stocks on here. I just got this yesterday. So the following the notification go, I got right. stocks on here. I don't know if you, I don't know, can you turn off stocks in the notification no. center? They can turn off stocks in the okay. So go to your notification center settings and turn off whatever you don't want. Okay, another big change, and this is um, this is probably going to trip you up the first few times you go to do it because you're so used to doing it the old way. Remember in the old iOS, when you swiped all the way to the left to your first screen and then you swiped one more time, that would take you in the search. Well, swiping now doesn't go anywhere. You'll just be doing this all day long. You'll never get to the search screen. Because now search has been moved to the top of every screen. So it doesn't matter which one I'm on. If I swipe down, there's search. So, again, that's useful because I don't have to go all the way back to the first screen and swipe one more time. I can get to search from any screen. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, and that's a <laughs> middle of the screen versus top of the screen. Well, this is for home screens. You don't get to search from an app. You only do it from screens, from home screens. So there would be no scrolling here. So home screen is, here, I'll show it to you with my thumb. That's search versus notification center. So notification center is from the top. Search is anywhere in the middle. And control center is from the bottom. So you have three places to grab. Top, notification center, anywhere in the middle, search, bottom, control center. Got it? Search is also available for the Chrome OS. Yeah. Search is available for the Chrome OS. 
that was primarily spot man you know, looking for apps to do your you know, the app development. If you go to uh, Spar, that's where the conversational you'll probably get a better uh, features from searching. So the spotlight that I found is just primarily for the apps and the devices. He's right. So I just said search for computer just to see what happened. So it's coming up with contacts that probably have the word computer somewhere in their company name. It's coming up with notes that have the word computer in them somewhere. It's coming up with emails that probably have the word computer in it somewhere. And it's coming up with music that have the words computer somewhere in the songs. But it's not doing any searches outside the device, basically. Okay. Um, folders. As you can see, I have lots and lots of apps, over 400, because I'm an app guy. I, this is what I do for a living. So needless to say, with that many apps, you could only fit on the smaller screens, nine, nine icons in a folder, and on the iPhone 5, and I believe the iPad could do 12. But then if you needed more than 12, you'd have to create another folder. So I'd have like games one, games two, games three, but photography one, photography two, photography three, for all the various apps that I would have in those categories. Well, now that's no longer the case. Um, one step forward, which is the ability now when I tap on a folder, the folder itself can have multiple screens. So you can have as many apps in a folder as you want. So now I, don't, I no longer have a photography two and a photography three. They're all in the same photography folder. The downside, which I just bugs me to no end. No, 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 no. I, I, know, I don't expect to be able to see them all. But now I can't have 12 anymore. Look how much room I got at the bottom of the screen. I could have another row of icons. Why did you take away 12? So now it's nine for everybody. No matter what size your screen is. What if you change the direction? Does that change? No, because the iPhone doesn't change direction on the home screens. Um, so, yay, I love the fact that I can have them all in one, but boo that I limited to nine. When I have more room, I could have 12. Because it just means more swiping. If I could do 12 at a time, there would be less swiping between screens. So, nitpick, but it is... Uh, I, I would love to see them go back to 12 at a time, especially on the screens that have the room. <coughs> and I believe that's, <coughs> I believe it's even the case on <coughs> iPad. <laughs> so even on iPad, <laughs> unlimited. So even on iPad, nine at a time with all that screen real estate. So we have to wait till uh, iOS 8 to uh, be able to have folders within the folders now? If that ever happens. Okay. Uh, next. Oh, here's another, just a bonus tip. Newsstand which is where you would get your magazines and newspapers and whatever, it would all put them all in that one spot automatically if they were newsstand compatible. But newsstand itself, could, back in the old version, could never be put in a folder because technically it was its own folder. And you can't have a folder within a folder. But now, if I hold down the button and move these around, uh, somewhere here I have a reference. <coughs> Nope, not on the home screen for sure. Yeah, the news one. Third row. Third row. Reference. Reference, yes. Okay, so if I put it in reference, you can now put newsstand in the folder. So before you couldn't. The only place it is now? Yes, that's the only place it is now. So if I go there and swipe over, there's a newsstand. And that's great for people that just don't use it. Why have it take up space on the main screen? You could bury it in a folder. <coughs> I don't use it on my phone. So it's uh, nice to be able to have it in a folder. Okay, multitasking has changed a little bit, at least in the way it works. So multitasking, of course, is the ability to switch between apps. So for example, let's say I bring up uh, Safari. 
And in Safari, I go to the Mac group website. Okay, I'm in the Mac group website. And then I want to go look at my email. Well, normally that would mean getting out of this, going and finding my email program, which is right there, and seeing I've got some email. Great. But then if I wanted to get back to Safari, well, the trick has always been since multitasking existed on iOS, double tap the home screen. Double tap the home screen. Oh, there we go. I didn't wait. Double tap the home screen and that will bring up the multitask bar. But now it's no longer just icons. It's showing you a preview of the screen you last left off on. So I could swipe through this way and get to the application I want. So if I wanted to get back to Safari, there's Safari, tap on Safari, Safari comes up. Double tap again, swipe back to mail. Okay? Now, this was also the way that we closed an app or quit an app that you wanted to quit. You normally don't have to, but some people, if an app is running amok or you think it's draining your battery or for whatever reason, you just want to close the app. Well, normally in the multitask bar, you would hold down the icon until it started, until it gave you the X, and then you click the X. There is no more X here. There's no more holding down the icon. So if I want to close the calculator, I go to this, I can see it, I swipe up. It's gone. Calculator's closed now. Drove me crazy for a while figuring that out. Do that again. All right, I will close auto miles. Swipe up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I love it too because it's faster. It's long, it takes less time than holding down waiting for the X. And you can close multiples at the same time. You can swipe two. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, cool. I learned something new today. That's sweet. I'm, yes, I'm using two fingers to swipe two things. Well, what it sounds like what you've run into is that while there is an unlimited number of apps you can have, it's now limited by storage, and while there's an unlimited number of apps you can have in a folder, there isn't an unlimited number of home screens. Right. So if you've got apps that extend past whatever, what is the current limit of home screens these days? Is it 9, 10, something like that? Okay, so let's say it's 9, whatever it is. If you have more, more screens worth of apps than you have home screens, then you'll, that's the limit. You'll, you won't be able to scroll past the 9 or 10th screen to see the rest. So the only way you can launch those other apps is by search or... Take the apps you already have that you can see, condense them into enough folders to where you start to see the rest. Okay, so, but you can get at them if you can remember If you can remember the name, name, sure. So, what I'm wondering is, okay, so you can get at it, you can find it, you're running it, but you can't grab it to stick in a folder. No. You can do, uh, you can do it though if you have a computer. You plug it into your computer, right, because iTunes will show you all the apps and all the screens, even the screens that you don't have. Well, you won't get a new screen unless it needs it. Like, you can't have a blank screen in the middle of two screens. Right. So, it will produce a new screen when you need a new screen. Do you know if there's any limits to the next screen? Yeah, like I said, it's nine. Oh, nine. Nine is, is the last limit I remember. It may be a little bit more than that now. Well, I think How many? How well, you would see them all, but that's just representing showing you all your apps. You're not going to see those screens mm -hmm. on your device. So it's still the limit of the device. Okay, so the limit on all of these devices is nine screens. From what I remember. I could be technically wrong. It could be 10, it could be 11, but there is a limit, whatever that number is. If she wanted to create a new screen and she still had some available to her, she could just take an app or folder and just grab it and put it in the folder. 
Right. That's what I'm saying. You can have a new screen by dragging a folder to a screen that you would have available. But if you've already got nine, you can't create ten. What if um, I got the two devices and I reboot or I restored it from the old Okay. Just I had no more of my organization, which I would have liked. Do you know if there was any way to? I mean, that's just the name. Well, it sounds like whatever your backup did didn't back up your organization, or the restore didn't happen properly. It should technically, when you do a backup and you do a restore, it should restore the device to exactly the way it was. If it didn't for whatever reason, that means the backup didn't happen right, or the restore didn't happen right, or you're restoring, backing up and restoring between two different device types, or two different OS's, or something else happened. But if it's device to device, iPhone 5 to iPhone 5, iPod Touch to iPod Touch, same OS to same OS, it should restore exactly. Okay, it's the same iOS, but it's not iPod Touch to Well, that's two different devices, so it will not necessarily maintain. Yes. No, it's whatever you left off on. It's whatever you left the app on. So, for example, I left the app on the Mac Room Home page. If I have another tab for terrywhite.com, I have to go back to the app and switch to that tab. Multitasking is just pausing, switching to another app, switching back. It's not doing something while you're multitasking. You swipe it's not down. multitasking. You can't swipe down. I didn't want to do that. You have to go back to the switch. Now i got to go launch the app again. Just like when you quit, you can't say, oops, I didn't mean quit, unquit. No, you got to go launch the app again. Okay. Um, camera. So the camera app, um, now you'll hear a lot mentioned about the iPhone 5S, and you'll hear a lot about the camera app, period. I'm going to start off on the camera app and the features that should be available to most of the devices. Then I'll talk about the iPhone 5S specific features. All right, so first, when I launched the camera app, um, and also I noticed here, let me try it on the iPad as well. Yeah, there's a difference. So right off the bat, and again, this may be one of those latest devices kind of thing where I'm not seeing a feature I'm about to talk about on the iPad, but this is not the latest iPad. So does anyone have an iPad mini here? Bring up the camera. <coughs> Anybody have an iPad 4 here? Like the current big iPad. You have it here? Bring up the camera. Okay, on the iPad 4 and on the iPad mini, when you bring up the camera, do you see the filters? No. Okay, so that's an iPhone feature then. Because I wasn't sure if I wasn't seeing it on this iPad because this is not a new iPad. That's why I was questioning. Okay, so first thing, um, when you bring up the camera, now there are multiple cameras. So I can, sw actually I didn't mean to take that picture, but I can swipe between the cameras. So I can swipe to the video camera so that now if I were to take a picture, I'd be, or I'm sorry, tap the button, I'd be videotaping. If I swipe this bar again, it shows me now I'm on photo. So if I take a picture, I'm actually taking a picture. And if I swipe again, now you notice I get a new square orientation, I'm sorry, square aspect ratio. So it's just cropping it to a square. Okay, and then last but not least, the iPhone can do a pano. So that's a panorama where if I start it and I then move across, it's making a panorama of the room. And there's my, my panorama stuff. Um, which, by the way, here's a side tip. If you want to go the other way, just tap the arrow. Oh. Oh. Oh, is that something available on the old OS? Yes, it is. Question was, was that available on the old, older iOS? Yes. So tap the arrow if you want to go the other way. So the other, so other than the square aspect ratio, those features were in the old OS. What's new is that when I go to take a photo now on the iPhone, I can bring up the filters, and I get a live preview of what those filters will look like. 
And most apps, you don't get that. You get the filter after you've taken the picture and you can see what it's going to do. Yeah, but just phone, but not iPad. Yeah. All right, so I kind of like Chrome for some reason. So that's the Chrome filter. I think it just does more contrast. I kind of like it. Nice color. And there's a Chrome, um, Chrome um, filter. I can go to none and put it back on normal. Now, let's see if I'm missing anything. Oh, one more thing that is new in, in the iOS 7 for phone. I haven't tried it for iPad yet. Oh, okay, it works on iPad too. Um, is burst mode. So if you're trying to capture a still image of something that's moving, a skateboard or a kid jumping in the air, whatever, as we know, you trying to snap the exact moment with the phone, good luck. Because the phone just doesn't respond as fast as your DSLR would. However, and now in iOS 7, if you hold that, okay, I'm going to have, um, I'm going to have someone give me some motion here. I'm just going to have you stand up and sit down. So let me, let's tell you when I'm ready. Go. I just took 27 photos. Just by holding down the shutter button. So now if I go back and look at those 27 photos, it picked what it thought was the best one, which was him completely standing. But I still have access to, you know, here. I still have access to, if I go to favorites, all of them. So see, he's blurry, kind of sitting back down. Not a good shot, not a good shot, not a good shot, not a good shot. Oh, you're not seeing the swiping because I'm in. Okay. So it's letting me see all 27 of them. And I can even mark favorites. Where did you find those? All the shots. Just, okay, so cancel. They're in, yeah, they're in the camera roll. Right. So they come in, and what's nice is it doesn't clutter up the camera roll with 100 images. It puts it as a group. You tap on the group, then you can say favorite and see all the images that it captured. So you can capture from 1 to 100 per burst. Yes, so I can say mark this as a favorite and here let me go all the way back. I know you're not seeing that, but let's say mark that as a favorite. Done. There's a favorites thing at the bottom of the burst. So when you're looking at all the photos, you can say you can tap on favorites. Is that just on the 5S or is that for iOS 7? That is iOS 7. So that, will it do follow focus like AI and camera? No. Focus? Not that I know of, no. I think it's, I don't think it's on the 4. It's not on the 4. Okay, so 4S and higher. On the 5. It should be. I did it on the 5 before I upgraded. First? First, yeah. You're holding down the button. I hold down the button afterwards, and I just get a bunch of stuff in the photo Huh. I know, because I know I did it on the button. I get a whole bunch of pictures. All right. Well, maybe that feature is not available. On, and you're on a, you know, you have to be. So the, it sounds like the burst feature is there, but not the organization or favoriting feature is there on the 5. But on the 5S, it's there as a group. And it's not on the really Not on the 4 at all. So here, let me show it to you this way. If I go to camera roll, yeah, see, it's, it, on, on here, it's just going to show me the one image. It's not going to show, show me the editing part. But that's burst, and um, pretty cool. Nope, no controls. Just hold the finger down. As long as you hold it down, it will count all the way up to 100. Yeah, I do the same thing on my five. Click, 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 click. 
Obviously, the Obviously it's processor intensive as well. And it would have to be, because you got to remember, these are 8 megapixel images. It's having to write as fast as it can, 8 megapixel images, 100 of them if you hold it down long enough, to your storage. So on a less than a 5S, you may not get the performance to capture more than a few at a time. But at least you can't. At least they didn't make this in a 5S only feature. You take 25 That's what I'm trying to figure out here. So let me let me see if I can tell it what I want to do. Because I've marked a couple of favorites. But I don't see what it's going to let me do with those favorites if I now say delete. I can say delete photo. But I don't see the ability to, oh wait, hang on. Oh wait, I see what it did. Oh cool, okay, I see what it did now. The ones I marked as favorites took it out of the group. So it put those favorites out separately on the camera roll. Now I can go and delete the group of the ones that are left. That's the way it works. So this is the group, and now I can delete the group. So it says it's going to delete 25 photos, yes, but I still am left with the favorites that I marked. So that's how it works. Okay, so they did make it sane. Okay, next, camera-wise. Okay, so those are all the features that are kind of, depending on your device, supported in iOS 7. That's what I'm coming to. So 5S has a couple of features that are exclusive to the hardware of the 5S. One of which is, for the first time in camera history, there are actually, you know, the 5 had an LED, I think the 4S had one as well, where when you take a picture, it could actually flash an LED. But that LED was all or nothing, it was the color temperature of the LED, and that was it. Um, now, there are two LEDs stacked on top of each other, so there's one here and one here, right, right above each other. One's cold, cooler, like a more bluish tint. The other one's warmer, which is a more yellowish tint. And what the camera is technically supposed to be able to do is identify the conditions of the room and flash them in, a, in the order of which I need to cool this picture down so I'll do more of the blue, or I need to warm this picture up, I'll do more of the yellow. But it will use both LEDs to give you a better temperature photo. Come on up here, I have a new model. My photographer Lou is going to be a model now. Alright, so we're going to take a picture of Lou. And instead of auto, we're going to tell it to be on. <laughs> yes, you have a bigger, big, much bigger camera. Have a seat. So I've turned the uh, flash on instead of auto, because auto would say, oh, I don't need the flash because it's bright enough. Matter of fact, can we turn the lights off? That would even be a better test. Because the other thing in 5S is that it's got a better aperture, so it's 2.2 versus 2.4. So it's supposed to do better than better low light. Yeah, I would go all the way up. Thank you. Perfect. You can see it. Yep. Okay, and that's it. Let's try it again. So I didn't know I was going to get a pre-flash. Okay, so now that I know I'm going to get a pre-flash, hold it. And that was it figuring out what to do. Okay. If you want to have a five, we can test or compare. Lights off again. Yeah, I'm just and flash on. on. Yep. Lights off again, please. I never said turn back on. <laughs> Thank you.
night and day. I know you can't see it, but this is the five, five S. <coughs> five S. Five. Thank you, sir. Very, very good thinking in there. Terry, wouldn't some lights fix lighting give it a better test for the stroke? Wouldn't what give it a better test? Mix light. In other words, have certain lights on and certain lights off. Well, it would give you a different test. But it's still it's still working the calculation. Right. Either way. It picks up the light in. Okay, and this is one um, that I'm going to show you that I did. Hang on here, let's. I captured, like I said, I came home from New York yesterday, I had a new phone in hand, and I wanted to capture a slow motion example. <laughs> So this was uh, going through the Detroit um, Metro Airport. And depending on the speed of the internet connection here, we'll see if we can get this to load. Oh, yeah. So you, you guys have seen this fountain if you've been to the airport. So this was in the slow motion mode right now. So it's just a matter of swiping over to slow motion and capture, and it will start capturing the same video, but in slow motion. That's on the 5S. That's a 5S feature. Basically, it's capturing 60 frames per second and slowing it down and camera. You can in your editing software, but I would question why would you want to. So you can go to my uh, YouTube channel, I'll put a link to this in the blog as well, uh, you can go watch this video, it's two minutes long and it's two minutes really of the same thing, but it's just fascinating to see the water stream for two minutes in slow motion. Because uh, it's just mesmerized now, you can't stop looking. I held it by hand like that. I'm not that good, it, it's a little sick. No, no. There's a slow motion video or feature. So swipe the slow motion, then video. And that's the difference is you can do slow motion in Adobe Premiere with any video or iMovie. But this is doing it in the camera as your capture. What time of day is it? Uh, I got home, that flight landed at 2.30. Yeah, that's, you, know, you see the sun, that's 2.30 sun coming in the window. You can capture as many videos as many ways as you want. It's on or off, capture or not capture, start, stop, slow motion, not slow motion. <coughs> Um, turn the LED on before you take the photo. I would imagine that, well, that is the LED. That is the, that is the flashlight. That is the LED. Not from the camera app. To answer your question, no, there's no way to do it within the app itself. Now, there may be a third-party app that does that, but in Apple's camera app, no. Somebody have to write one. Okay, and that is the camera. Oh, one more thing. Um, and this has got to be the longest time I've waited for a feature that should have been there since day one. And that is, oh, wrong app. Now when you go to, and by the way, I forgot to write this one down, so this is, I'm happy I went here, because I forgot to write it down, I forgot to mention it again. 
Notice that it just checked for updates and I have two updates. Well, if I didn't check just now, eventually it would have checked, and not only would it have checked, it would have updated. Auto-updating is now a feature of iOS 7. And you can turn it off if you don't want to auto-update. Uh, How? The first thing I tried to do was because I want to know what's going on. I think I remember asking you to go to your app store settings. Yeah, well, and I thought they were going to give us a rollback feature. Did that happen or not? No. Okay. Um, but anyway, where I was going with this was not the... Actually, well, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, you can tell it to only do it with Wi-Fi. Okay, so I, I'm basically, I just went into the App Store, whether it's App Store, iTunes Store, whatever, and I did want to talk about that one feature I forgot to write down, so auto app updating is one of my, one of my favorites. But if you scroll all the way down to any of the stores, App Store, iTunes Music Store, whatever, obviously there's the Redeem gift card that's been there for years. Well, now when you tap Redeem, it's going to ask me for my password, but you'll notice below that, I can now use the camera to scan the barcode. Just like you can now on your computer with the latest iTunes. But that used to drive me crazy. It's like, I have a million apps that can scan barcodes. Why doesn't Apple's own app scan their own barcode? And now it finally does. So when you have one of these gift cards that will be given away today, and you scratch off the back of it, there's a barcode, you'll be able to scan the barcode instead of entering that long, stupid number. And it will redeem it for you. Probably. <laughs> Worked when I tried it. Okay, uh, next up is AirDrop. So let me explain what AirDrop is. Does anyone have an AirDrop capable device? Since I don't, <laughs> I mean, I don't have another one. <coughs> You guys have AirDrop over there? Not in the fire. Jack? Yeah. All right. My first question, Jack, does AirDrop require you to be on the same uh, network? Yes. Um. Well, yes and no. You have to be in proximity because it will use Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Okay. Well, let's see if it works. I'm going to go to AirDrop. I'm going to turn it on for everyone. That's. Oh, by the way, you can turn it off on just for the people in your contacts so other people aren't sending you stuff. So I could do contacts only because Jack's in my contacts. Or I could say open it up for everyone and then if someone tried to send me something I'd get a message. All right, so now that I'm there, I'm going to go back to the Photos app and that photo of Lou, I'm now going to say share and you're not seeing it because it's trying to preview the app, preview it. But I can say share and then tap on AirDrop. Maybe. I feel like I'm flying. There it is. So Jack showed up. His little face is there now. And I can now share it with Jack. <laughs> Not doing anything yet. Camera's too heavy. Okay, it says waiting, so he probably got a message to respond to. There it is. And it now said failed. I didn't. I tried it again though. Here, I'll hold it closer to you. Yeah, because we're not on the same Wi-Fi network, so it's got to be using Bluetooth. I got it first time. I might get it now. All right, here, let me try it again. Nope, it just sees AirDrop, and as long as we're both on, it will show each other up, and then he'll get a message saying that he has to accept it if he wants. Anything? No. 
All right. I got a preview of the picture. So I'm going to I'm going to ask you to walk closer because <laughs> we are doing this over Bluetooth. Hit the button that says okay. What if you're on the same network? If you're on the same network, then you don't have to be closer. We're not. Here we go. Yep. So you just had to be closer. Oh, yeah. And now it's sending it. And now it says sent. So there it shows right there. So AirDrop is going to be great for those moments when you're standing next to one and someone you want to send them something. You don't have to want to email it. You don't have to do anything weird, Dropbox it, whatever. It just went from my device to his device directly. But until everyone has a later, newer device, its uses is going to be limited. That was a 5S to a 5. So it's 5 minimum, iPad mini minimum, iPad 4 minimum. Have to be running iOS 7, of course, because it's an iOS 7 feature. Okay, maybe it's not on the iPad 4. Should be. I know, I said everybody. But she says she's not even seeing the feature. Did you turn it on? Mm. You have to turn it on first. It is on the five. Yeah. So yeah, you got, I, but you don't have iOS seven yet. Okay. So it is on the iPad four. That's what I figured. So it's basically think of it this way: as all current devices, five, uh, five and up, iPad four and up, iPad mini and up, and whatever the latest iPad t iPod Touch is and up. Okay, what's your question, Luke? How much space is this iOS 7 going to require? Is, is it be the same for every... Well, it's, it don't, look at iOS takes up, doesn't take up your storage. It uses its own. So oh. it won't take up any more than your iOS 6 did, in theory. Because it reserves its own space for the, for the operating system. Not part of system. But it does, if you're doing it on the phone, it does need space to download it first before it installs it. To download it, to install it. But that's not how much it's going to keep when it's done. No. It's a in progress. So his question was, if I'm standing next to three people and two people have AirDrop turned on and I send it, and then the third person turns AirDrop on five minutes later, will they get it? No, because I didn't send, I didn't have that third person to send it to. It's a peer -to -peer. It only it's a peer to peer network in real time when you have the feature turned on. When it's not turned on, I don't see you, so I don't see anyone else in the room that didn't have it turned on. And now that it's been sent, and I'm no longer in it. There's, they're not going to see. I'm, they're not going to see me, or I'm not going to see them um, from here on out. Okay, the weather app, another new one. Um, I have been using third-party weather apps almost since day one because they always did more. The weather app uh, in iOS that was built in was just very, very basic. However, the new one is so good now that I could actually think about not using my third-party ones anymore. It's not everything, but it's certainly way better than it used to be. So first of all, when I go to weather, um, and I launch the iOS 7 weather app, it crashed. It's launched again. There it is. And it shows me, um, first of all, it's showing me current location, which it's updating right now. I can, of course, have the cities that I want to be able to look at. So there's New York, and I like the animation. It's showing me rain now in New York because it's raining. Uh, Las Vegas, and that's all I have. Um, so first and foremost, you get kind of, and the clouds, by the way, are slowly moving. So it's animating whatever the weather is. Um, secondly, you're getting more of a by hour update. 
That wasn't, I don't think that was part of the old one either. Yeah. Was it? If you tapped on it. If you tapped on it, okay. Um, so the buy hour updates. And it cuts them off right now, like, you know, when it becomes 6 p.m., you'll no longer be able to get 5 p.m. Got it. Uh, showing me, so <laughs> if I tap, I can now see the humidity, chance of rain, 2%. Yeah, right, it's raining now. Uh, <laughs> wind, so forth and so on. Oh, you know what? This might not be finished updating yet because it still says Saturday. Yeah, so it's not finished updating. But I like the weather app way better than I did the old one. Full screen, nice visuals. Um, once it's finished updating, we'll, we'll see some better results. But tap right on the temperature. Tap on the temperature to get to the other um, oh. settings. Well, that's only in the new one. That's in the new one, right. Another question that I had, when you add the cities over there and there's a whole stack of them, can you arrange them in a certain, is there a way to Okay, so his question was, uh, when I add a city, can I arrange them in the order I want? So the first one will usually always be your current location based on the GPS or location information. But let's say I go add a new one. Let's say I go add in San Jose. Uh, 95110. So I can do it by zip code, I can do it by city name. Uh, so there's San Jose, California. And of course it's going to add it last because that was the last one I did. But if I want to see San Jose or I'm, let's say I'm, I'm back from New York now, I don't really need to see New York uh, first in the list. I can hold down any one of these and drag them in order. So yes, you can reorder them any way you want. So I can say, you know what, I'm going to San Jose before I go to Las Vegas. Let me see that one next. That's the info screen that you wrote. That was the add to add more screen. Yeah. So if I go to one, that's this menu down in the lower right hand corner. And you can't do that with the iPhone 5 though. Lou, upgrade to iOS 7. You'll have all this. <laughs> Okay, I heard someone mumble, how do you delete, and it's not there. Yeah, probably a swipe. Yep, okay. By the way, and that's something that changed, that kind of threw me off right off the bat. We'll get to it in mail, but since I'm here, in most iOS 6 cases, if you had something you wanted to delete by swiping, you could swipe in either direction, left to right, right to left. Now in iOS 7, to get to the delete, it is only right to left. So swiping left to right drove me crazy when I first brought up mail, because I was like, did they take that out? Oh my god, I need that die! And then I said, oh, let me try it the other way. <laughs> so they took away left to right. It's only right to left now to swipe to delete. Okay, um, wallpapers, simple concept, but in the I, iOS and especially on iPhone 5S, uh, when you go to your settings and when you go to wallpapers and brightness and when you go to choose a wallpaper now, you can choose ones that are stills like you always did, static images, photos, whatever. You can choose the ones from your camera roll, or you can choose dynamic. And these are the ones that have the parallax effect. So as you're moving the phone around, they'll be moving in the background behind your work. So just know that there are dynamic wallpapers if you want to use them and if you think it's worth the battery life. I don't. Is it hardware or software? I doubt if it'll work on a four, because I just don't think the processing power is there. Someone just said it works on four S. Okay. Depending on the hardware, exactly. Um, another quick feature: if you have favorites in your phone app, those will now have icons next to them, so you see the faces. Okay. Um, what else? There is now a dedicated 
FaceTime app on the phone. There was always one on the iPod Touch and on the iPad, but never on the iPhone. If you wanted to go to FaceTime before, you'd launch the phone app, find someone, and then tap FaceTime to FaceTime with them. But now there's a dedicated FaceTime app. Um, so, you know, other than it just being a quicker access because there's an icon for it, really no difference in functionality, except that now FaceTime can do just audio calls. So if you want to talk to someone and it's cheaper for you to do it long distance over Wi-Fi, then you could do a FaceTime audio call as opposed to a phone call. That's really important for things like international. So if I'm on a free Wi-Fi in Europe and on a hotel and I want to call home and not be charged anything, I can do a FaceTime audio call that's just voice. Now, what's the advantage? Because wouldn't it be better to be able to see them? Well, sure. But audio, of course, is going to take a whole lot less bandwidth. And if you're on a slower connection, more than likely you'll have a better audio call than you would a video call. And maybe you just don't want to see them. <laughs> All right. Maybe you just don't want to see them. So FaceTime audio it will probably work out better for you in that case. All right. Speaking of the Photos app, uh, we were kind of looking at, here, let me go, done, camera roll. We were kind of looking at my camera roll, but you'll notice down at the bottom, there is the um, Photos, Shared, and Albums. So albums is what you would expect. It's just like iOS 6. It would be whatever albums you have on your device. But now if we just go to photos, there are things called moments. And these are automatically created for you based on the time, date, and location of where you took the photos. And now you can even go back years. And it gives you a visual representation of the photos you took, which are too tiny to actually see. But it's kind of giving you the year by year of what's on your phone and kind of up in the upper right hand corner where you took them or where you were. So in 2011, I, was, I have some photos from Poland, Russia, Denmark, and three other places. Um, there's some more Russia, New York, Nevada, so forth and so on. So kind of cool to be able to see that stuff by year. Pardon? Well, you love it? Oh, it's great. Okay. I had to look for a photo. I actually found it. Tap on the ear and then keep drilling down. So here are my photos from South Africa and Sabi Sabi. I was able to quickly see them. Yeah, just keep drilling down. So if I wanted to see the picture of the lion, there's a picture of the lion. Now they have to be in residence on your phone. Yes, they have to be actually there to be able to tap on. That's a 64 gig. This is the 64 gig. All right. Um, How does it find the location? Based on the GPS of when you took the photo. You took the photo with your phone and you have it location services enabled. That information is automatically being stored in the metadata everywhere you take a picture. If you took a picture with your regular camera and then loaded it on your phone, that GPS information won't be there unless you had a GPS on your camera when you took the picture. Or you added it via software such as Lightroom. Uh, I don't use the iCloud photo sharing feature. So, well, I do and I don't. I don't use regular photo stream because I have no use for it. But I do use shared photo streams. And that was, that was the next thing I was going to say. Shared photo streams finally now allow you to have someone, like, like for example, if I share a photo stream with Lou of the Mac group meeting, and Lou takes pictures and want to add to that same photo stream, now in iOS 7 he can. Before, a photo stream was one way. I could share it out, you could look at the pictures, you could comment on them, you could say you like them, but you couldn't add any of your own. Now you can. Um, Safari. Safari is extremely fast on iOS 7 and especially iPhone 5S. Um, it is, I mean, I'm a Chrome user on my desktop. I prefer Google Chrome and I have Chrome on iOS, but Safari on iOS will make me go back to using Safari. It's that much faster. 
Um, the other thing is they've gotten, they've taken care of some of the things that drove me to Chrome in the first place. So, for example, one of the things was in the up in the top bar, you had the ability to type in the URL where you wanted to go, and then over to the right there was the search bar. Well, most modern browsers, it's all one bar now. So in Chrome, it was always type in what you want to search for or type in a URL in the same spot. It didn't matter. Safari is now like that. So there's no more search bar. If I want to search for uh, sushi in, in Troy, Michigan, it brings up a search. But if I type in uh, terrywhite.com, it will uh, still still going. It will bring up that actual website. So the the search bar URL bar now unified. The other thing that um, kind of drove me crazy with with Safari is that you could have multiple pages or tabs tabs on the iPad, pages on iPhone, but you were limited to eight. You only have eight at a time. Now it's unlimited. So if I go down to that button in the lower right-hand corner, it gives me a nice visual representation of all the pages I have open. And I can scroll through and find the one I want to jump back to. So if I want to go to the Pocket Wizard blog that I was looking at days ago, I can tap on it, bring it back up, and it will refresh. So in the lower right hand corner, the little square on top of a square button will bring up the pages that you have. And of course I can tap plus to add a new page to go to a new site. And private on the left hand side, if I tap private, that means private browsing. So none, nothing's being cached, nothing's being saved, no cookies, no book, nothing. So private browsing is for people that don't want to be tracked while they're browsing. The X in front of it on the left is to delete that tab. So if I say uh, I don't need, for example, this digital photography class site anymore, I can just tap it and send that tab to the cornfield. Don't need my discuss profile open anymore. Don't need the Apple Store open anymore. And what else? Don't need the UPS tracking anymore. Don't need the Survey Monkey anymore. So I'm closing tabs that I no longer need those sites open anymore. Don't need the location of that meeting place anymore. This is Mac Group Meetings, I believe. Oh, it takes up space, doesn't it? Yeah, it brings up the meeting. So, love, love, love the, the speed and just the way Safari works now. Now, like I said, on iPad, you won't get this little cool display stacked of the pages you open because they have it's tab browsing, just like on your desktop. So earlier this morning I went looking for it, it's like, hey, where's that button? Oh yeah. You don't need the button because you actually have the tabs. And it's also not limited to eight tabs on iPad anymore, if it ever was. Okay. Uh, oh, one more thing about when you're um, Actually, never mind, it's a mail thing. No, it's a browser thing. Let's say you're typing in a URL. Let's say I want apple.com. Now, it popped it up, but let's say I want, or maybe I want to go to a different site, apple.org or whatever. Remember the big thing back in 2007 was the iPhone was the first one with a .com button? No more dedicated .com button, at least not at first glance. It's gone. It's not on the keyboard anymore. <gasps> but it is, the functionality is still there and still works like it used to in iOS 6 that a lot of people didn't know. A lot of people didn't know if you held down that .com button, it would give you the other ones like .org, whatever. And if a keyboard didn't have .com, it was the period button. So if I hold down period, it will give me .com, .net, .org, .edu. So you can still get to that functionality. That's the way I always did it anyway, because I was not always going to .com. But, um, so I didn't even miss the .com button being gone until someone pointed it out in a blog post. <laughs> then if it, so, Lucek, can you add a custom one? Yes, by typing it in when you want to use it differently. 
<laughs> you can't add any more to that. Yes. It shouldn't. Because while a page is not being used, it's not doing anything. It's just sitting in paused memory. Yep. They don't go away if you close the app. So if I restart my iPhone and go back to Safari, those same 10, 12 tabs will still be there. No problem. Now keep in mind, the only reason you keep, you create a new tab is I want to be able to look at two toggle back and forth between two or more sites at a time. I'm not creating a new tab for every single site I want to go to. So I'm never going to have thousands. I've never had, I, I mean, I would hit the eight limit, but I would usually have no more than eight, 10, 15 tabs open at a time anyway. Also more than eight, I'll have to get one, Yes. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. So it's not limited anymore. Okay. Um, when was the last time you got an I, you got an iOS update or even a macOS update that actually saved you money? Yeah. Right, because normally it costs you money. You need a new upgrade for something. You need new hardware. This is the first iOS that's actually saving me four bucks a month. Terry. Yes. Yes, correct. And I, I, that's not a new feature, but I will show it again. Uh, what she's referring to is that with iCloud, you have syncing of your your iOS, iOS your device. No, period. Your even your Mac. So it's showing me Safari what I have open on each device. So what she discovered is if you go to the tabs and you scroll down far enough. It'll show you the sites you have open on other devices. So this is showing me what I had open on the iPad in Safari. In case, oh, you know, I want to look at that site I was looking at before I left home on my whatever. I don't use it on my Mac, so that's why it's not showing my Mac. But I could have it show me, or it will show me the tabs I left open on my computer or the tabs I left open on my iPad, and I can tap to go to those sites. <laughs> Because it will list the name of the device at the top. So it says Terry White, 64 gig, 4G iPad. Oh, I see. Or Terry White's MacBook Pro. Is that that's only in 7? That's not only in 7. That was a feature of iOS 6. That's why I didn't talk about it. Does that device you mentioned the privacy feature. Yes. Is that true privacy or? It is true browser history. There's no such thing as true privacy in 2013. <laughs> so there still is a record of, of everything you did, including this conversation. <laughs> All right. Um, so back to the saving me money. How do you sync these different devices? Is it under the iCloud? iCloud. And the settings? In, okay, so the question was in iCloud settings, this is where you go and turn on. Safari bookmarks, yes. So now my Safari bookmarks or my Safari tabs are being synced in iCloud. Okay, back to saving me money. Yes. We'll get to saving the money. We don't want to save me money. Anything is possible. But they have to build it in somewhere. So you're asking me, can something not be hacked? Anything can be hacked. Anything is possible. Anything can happen. Including your fingerprint technology. Including anything. There is no such thing as can't be done. There can be hasn't been done yet. So you can apply that to anything for the rest of your life, technology-wise, can be done. Would, would you use the fingerprint technology? I love it. I use it every day because NSA, Army National Guard, and everybody else already has my fingerprints. They've had my fingerprints for years. What do I care? 
Okay. Terry, I'm sorry. You just on this between devices iCloud settings. Turn it off. Okay. Correct. It does run in six. I've shown it before. So in your Safari app on your iPad, go to Safari. In the upper right hand corner of Safari. Yes. I showed that back when I showed iOS 6. So that's why I didn't talk about it today, because it wasn't new. Okay, uh, next. Saving money. Saving money. Yeah. Okay, um, four bucks a month. iTunes Radio. Now, iTunes Radio is not four bucks a month, it's free. But what I was paying for was Pandora Radio. Pandora Radio is free. If you want ads, if you don't want ads, it's either an annual fee or four bucks a month. So I had done an annual fee, paid for it all last year, and then it came up for renewal. And I knew iTunes radio was coming. <laughs> so I did not subscribe for another year. I did the month to month. So I got charged for the last two months of four bucks a month. And then yesterday I canceled it. Because iTunes Radio exists now. So what's iTunes Radio? So when you go to music in iOS 7 or iTunes 11.1 on your computer, in the music app, let me go back, let me go back. Oops, not history. Ooh, I don't want to clear history now. Done. Can you say where we're going again? We're going to the music app. So in the music app, you've got your playlist, you've got songs, you've got artists, and now you have iTunes Radio or radio. iTunes Radio lets you add radio stations based on artist, song, genre, pretty much anything you can search iTunes for in the first place. So if you like a particular artist, you can go search for it, you can go say, Give me, here let's do a new station. New station, and I like the artist, uh, his name is Neo. So I have to type in Neo, and it comes up with Top Hits, top hits Artist Neo Radio. So I tap that, and I've now added <coughs> a Neo radio station. So that means when I go to listen to that station, which it's about to do, I'm going to probably, for the very first song, <coughs> hear a song from Neo. It'll be a random song. Then the next song most likely will not be from him. It'll be from other artists like him. Covering that song. Not necessarily covering that song. It has not, no, not that song. Just same other channel. artists. Right, same channel. So it's like setting up radio stations for the kind of music you like. No charge. But you will hear ads. Ah, how do you get past the ads? Anyone heard of iTunes Match? An annual fee, it's 25 bucks. Well, I was an iTunes Match customer from day one. If you're an iTunes Match customer, you don't get the ads. So, I was already paying for that and Pandora. Now I'm not paying for Pandora anymore. So, it's free. You will hear an ad every now and then. I, I don't know what they sound like because I've never heard them. But, because <laughs> I was iTunes Match already. Um, but if you don't want to pay anything, it's free. You can listen to it all day long with ads, just like regular radio. And your radio stations sync from devices. So this new Neo station is now on every device I have, including my computer. All right, and that song is playing. So now I can let that song continue to play. Um, I can pause it. Now here's a tip that drove me crazy. And this is... This is one of those un-Apple-like interface things that drives me crazy. They have them every now. Okay, we get it. Yeah, you all discovered where the music is. Can you start turning them down, muting your devices, pausing? Thank you. Okay. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Just pause. It took over. Turn the volume down at least. 
There are hand, there's buttons for that. There you go. All right. We will never let you live that down. Um, one thing I liked about Pandora is Pandora gets better at knowing what to play over time by your interactions with it. So obviously when a song is playing, you may not like the song. So you have two choices in Pandora. You could skip past the song, which that means it may come up again. Or you could say, thumbs down. Thumbs down meant never play this song again. I hate it. Don't, I don't want to hear the song ever again. Well, when I brought up this interface, I was like, well, where's, the thumb, where's the, I don't want to hear it again. Where's the thumbs down? Where's the, I hate it. Because I see a star, which I'm assuming the star means what? I like, I like it. It's good. It's great. And I was so disappointed. I was like, oh, I'm going to have to go back to Pandora because I hate this song that's playing right now. So, <laughs> so, and of course, I'd skip by and later on it'd come up again. It's like, okay, this is driving me crazy. This is un-Apple-like. Mm. Press the star. Yes. Because it's a star. That means good. That means, yeah, I want to start. I want to hear it again. I never thought star would bring up a menu that says don't play it again. Mm. So un-Apple-like, but there it is. Because that's not intuitive to me. If I want to, I can. So that's iTunes, obviously. So any song you play is going to be on iTunes. And if you want it, the buy button will be in the upper right corner at all times. Um, so if there, if I, and by the way, the opposite. If the, you know, Pandora had thumbs up, meaning I like this song. Not, not only continue to play it often, but play more like it. So they have the same feature, play more like this one, or never play this song again. Um, and of course, someone asked about the price in the upper right-hand corner. Since it is iTunes, if I skip to the next song, whatever this song is from Alicia Keys, if I like that song and don't already have it, I could tap the 129 and buy it right now if I wanted to. So if you, if you hear a song playing on the radio and you want it, you can go buy it. So you have to tap it again to buy it. Well, no, I've seen it. Well, true, depending on what version you have. I've seen it show me, um, if I already have the song, the little iCloud thing to download it. It didn't show it to me to buy it if I already had it, but some probably will if it depends on if it doesn't, it's playing a different version than the one you bought. If you buy it, then you could do it. Does it what? Yeah, but remember, buying it has nothing to do with the radio thing. It's just adding it to your iTunes library, just as if you go buy any other song. So it's just giving you the it's giving you the convenience of, hey, I really really like that song and I want to own it. Let me buy it right now. And Pandora had the same thing. Pandora, even which wasn't by Apple, had the take me to the iTunes store to buy this song that's playing right now, because the music companies love that. <laughs> If you buy it, does it play it anymore? I don't know. I doubt it because you're not using the I like this, play it more feature. Uh, I wonder if you, if you put that in your playlist and uh, repeat it without buying it. No. Mm -hmm. This is not a playlist thing. It's radio. If you want playlists, then you're buying songs, downloading them, and putting them in playlists. So, four bucks a month. Um, and it's going to take me a while to get it back up to where I had Pandora. Because I've been using Pandora for over a year, marking thumbs up, marking thumbs down, and Pandora was really good at playing just what I wanted to hear. <coughs> this drove me crazy day one. Because <laughs> it was playing all kinds of stuff I did not want to hear. But I have to be diligent and say, don't ever play this again. Now, here's the other thing. Just like Pandora, just like all these other radio um, stations, there's a limit on how many you can skip at a time. And I don't, I can't remember what it is for, um, for iTunes um, six. radio, six. So you get skip, you get six skips, and then you're forced <laughs> to listen to that next one, or change stations, or get out of the app. But you can only skip six, because they don't want people, in other words, yeah. they're giving you this for free. 
So they don't want you making this your iTunes library and listening to just only what you want to listen to. You got to listen to some things you may not care about, but you only get six skips. Is it at a time per day per session? What is it? So I think if you listen to one, you can get them to skip six more. Okay, so six in a row. And I, and I hit that limit yesterday. <laughs> nope. Uh-uh. Skip. Never play that again. Huh? What do you mean I can't? <laughs> I can't skip it anymore. Um, yeah, that, that station is going to take a little work, the one I was working on. Um, but it, again, it, it took Pandora months to get me to get, for me to get it the way I like it. This is going to be the same thing. <laughs> right, and as, as Lou just said, no different than a regular radio station. How many songs on a regular radio station in a row do you hear that you absolutely love and can't wait to hear again? And how many do you get to skip? None. Yeah. All right. You can also add more artists to the same station. So say you want me, I want to say you want me or Diamond. Okay. That would be a weird mix, but I, I hear you. You can add both of those to the same station. That's a private mix. I did not know that. Oh, I see the weight. I see something here. Hang on. There's a nice banner going there. Wait, let me go back. Hang on. Hold on. Hold on. Go back. And edit. And Neo Station. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Add another artist or song or genre to this. This is what he's referring to. So that's pretty cool because I don't think I could do that in Pandora. Those artists by state, per, you know, one per station. So if I like, like let's say I want to create my own custom 80s station and I want, you know, Diana Ross, Michael Jackson, you know, Whitney Houston, so forth and so on, all together as one station, I can add those artists together. Look at the one below that. If you never play this, you can add negative two. Cool. Never play this. Add artist. So if there's an artist you never want to hear from, you can say never play music by this artist to the song. So actually, that's more flexible than Pandora was. So thanks for that tip. Um, and I can share this station via AirDrop. So if I wanted to send it to you know whoever had AirDrop going on right now, or iMessage, or Twitter, or Facebook, or whatever. You can delete that back there too if you just want to get rid of it. Yeah. Yeah, I could delete the whole station, which I did have it screw up on me. Um, I created a station, and I just, I just assumed, because just like with any OS or any new thing, there are going to be bugs. So I created a station, and I started skipping some songs and, and telling it not to play certain songs. And then it got to a point to where I would tap the don't play this song again, and it just wouldn't take it. And I, I thought I had just reached a skip limit. And then it just started cycling the same three songs over and over and over so that would to the point to where I just deleted the station and recreated it and then it was fine you could use and never play this thing then, couldn't you? I could but it was like, like in other words it started ignoring what I was trying to tell it to do you can only put six of those in there I don't know how many of this is limited to but um, iTunes radio I think it's great and I, like I said it's not just an iOS 7 thing it will be in your iTunes 11 one if you have Mac OS lion or higher I found that out the hardware yesterday I had a computer that was still running 1068 that I used just for iTunes and that computer I installed 11.1 .1 iTunes on it and it's like where's radio and then quick Google search iTunes radio requires 10.7 or higher on the Mac It requires seven on iOS, period, because it's built in. Okay, uh, that is iTunes Radio. Where are we on time? We're almost out of time, so let me do... I'll do calendar. Um, one more thing I just want to point out very quickly is you see the clock? The clock used to only be at 10 a.m. or 10 p.m. Now it's a real clock. It's actually showing you what time it is right now. It's kind of just, yeah, the icon itself is actually a real clock. Okay, calendar. Uh, calendar, I'm a calendar user every single day, so it took me a while to get used to what they did here. And I was missing something that luckily I found later. 
So first of all, you can now get a year view, which is kind of cool. To tap to a specific month and day and get to it. Uh, if you turn the device sideways, you will instantly get your by the week. Uh, that's not new. But also if you... Um, can you advance a year? question was, can you advance a year just... Yeah. Scroll. There it is. Okay, now to get to once you get to month, to get to a particular day, just obviously tap on that day. And so that's showing me my all day events at the top, my Mac group meeting today, nothing else going on today other than that. Um, what I was missing, which is not very obvious, again, another iOS or, or interface kind of weirdness. I use list view in iOS 6 all the time. Like, show me a running list of my events day by day. And it's like, where's list? I use that all the time. There's no list button. You'll never guess where it is. Because I didn't. Nope. Today is taking me to today. Search. The magnifying glass takes you to the list view. Where you can search for something too. There's a search bar. But search is where you get to list, and of course, you can tap in the search and search. Um, true. But now you can customize the colors. Whereas before, you were limited to whatever color it assigned. So now I can actually go tell it which color I want that calendar to have. Um, that's pretty much it in the calendar. Of course, you can create a new event, just like you always did. No, still no customizing individual events with different colors. People have been asking for that for years. I think it drives me nuts. I'd like to be able to say, uh, Mac group every third Sunday of the month. How do you specify that? Well, it's not every third Sunday of the month, so that would be a bad idea, but uh, but to answer your question, the only way to do it I know of is on the computer. On your computer you can do it. You can't do it on iOS. There's still been, yeah, you still do it in iCal, but you always could, but you can't do it on the iOS devices. Can you get out dates? Pardon? send out Yes, I do. Yes, it can. He's asking how to do a specific thing that really doesn't have anything to do with Mac Group. He just gave that as an example. Is there any way to collapse what you don't have? Like in iOS 6, you could just have four or five events under the month. Yeah, by going to the list view. But that's going to show you every day. Yeah. It's showing me the four or five things I have per day, right? But it's showing you it's the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. Correct. So your question is, you can you go to a specific day of no, the month? month, like the month. Can't be this okay, so I'm in the month. I'm on a particular day, which is today. You'd be like this view. No. Okay, so they eliminated. They eliminated that. That's the question. Yes. You got, you got to see it all. Yes. You can see part of the month. Right. Then you're seeing the week. Yes, I can swipe on the actual week, swiping from week to week. All right, um, you're asking me, I could know any of a dozen things I like to see changed. <laughs> yeah, okay. So last but not least, I'm not going to have time to show it, but just a uh, couple quick things. Actually, I will show one thing really quick. In mail, uh, first of all, mail, even though mail could always show you a PDF, it couldn't show you PDF annotations. So like if you had a digital signature on a PDF, you wouldn't be able to see it. If you had a sticky note on a PDF, you wouldn't be able to see it in mail. Now you'll see those annotations. Um, the other thing is, I talked about this earlier, but if I want to swipe this, I have to swipe to the right. I can't swipe to the left to delete it. 
And last but not least, um, you can now, for the first time, tap on an email, flag it, and move it to the junk folder. iOS never had junk features. And now you can. Junk spam, same thing. Okay, thank you. Oh, and speaking of spam and junk, uh, here, let me go to phone real quick. And let me go to this phone number. I don't want to call it. I always do that. <laughs> um, I'm going to go. Okay, come on, come on. Don't call. I want to hit I instead. There we go. Because now, this is, this is by the way, I had a uh, ride to the airport. This was the driver's phone number contacting me asking if I was ready. But let's say this was a spam number. This is a number of calling my phone that I don't want to call me anymore. You now in iOS have the ability to block this caller. So you can say, <laughs> see how excited people get? <laughs> One more thing. Okay, you can <laughs> block this contact and that will that number will never disturb you again on your phone. By going to the number that called you, and, or you could actually go to the block list and add it manually, but um, you can say, tap the little I, and then scroll to the bottom, block this caller. When they call, what happens? I don't know what they hear. Um, you won't hear anything. You won't ever know it ever rang, but I don't know what they get. They probably... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true. Well, Who cares? Yeah, they probably get some generic message that this person's not accepting calls from this number. I'm assuming, but I don't know. I have to block a number temporarily and call call it and see what I get. In the settings, in the settings, phone settings. Yes, you can go to the phone settings and unblock. So if you're friends with that person again, you can unblock them. All right. Last but not least, people ask me about the. Um, Finger, fingerprint scanner on the iOS. So obviously if I swipe to unlock, it's gonna ask me for my pass, passcode, which I love the big numbers now, by the way. I'm gonna cancel and I'm gonna lock it again. And this is my favorite feature of iPhone 5S. Tap, instead of me swiping and doing anything, just hold my finger down again. Unlocked, because it knows my fingerprint. You only use one. I can have up to five fingerprints. So I've got this one too. <laughs> Unlocked. And I've got this one too. And I've got a secret pinky. One of these works too. <laughs> and if you cut off my finger, it does not work. It will not. You cannot do CSI. What if you have a cut? That's why you set up more than one finger. Thank you, sir. What'd you guys think? Have a good day.